In this video, we will learn how to state the amplitude, period, midline, and phase shift of a periodic function. All right, let me just bottom line it for you. If you have a sine function in this form with a sine b times x minus h plus k, um, the amplitude is a. You get the period by doing 2 pi divided by b. The phase shift which is a horizontal translation, is going to be h. All right, notice that negative sign means you do the opposite of what it normally looks like. So if it's positive, you actually will go to the left. Um, and k is going to be the midline. Think vertical shift. All right, so if it, there's a 3 here, we'd be moving the normal graph up 3. So up k if it's positive and down k if it's negative. Before we look at the actual problems, let me focus on the one thing that students have trouble with. Um, this part here in the parentheses, recognizing the phase shift. Okay, see how the b value is outside of parentheses. Let me emphasize this to you. Remember when we used to factor. Um, when we had expressions like this, say if I had 2x plus, let's say, 6. And sometimes we would factor this. And the only way to factor this would be to pull out the greatest common factor. So we would take the 2 and we'd put it here. And then we'd say, OK, what goes on the inside? And that would turn out to be x plus 3. Now, that one is obvious because um, you can just think, oh, 2 times 3 makes 6. But um, sometimes it's useful to understand that you can think of this as dividing both of these by 2, especially when you have something that's um, not a multiple. So for example, what if I had this instead? So let's see. What if I had 3x plus 7? And for some reason, I just had to pull out that 3, all right, even though it's not a GCF. What if I wanted to pull it out anyway? I could still do it. Um, but I'd have to do it like this. Just like here, to find out what goes inside, I divided everything by 2. Um, if I'm pulling out that 3, I'm going to divide everything by 3. So this would leave x plus, and this I would just leave it as 7 over 3. Okay, now let's apply that to these more new kinds of expressions that have radians uh, in them. So for example, um, say if I had 2x, and then I have, um, let's say, plus pi over 3. This pi over 3 is not going to be the phase shift. It's not going to be the phase shift until um, we pull that 2 outside of parentheses. So if I'm going to pull that 2 out, you know what, let me leave a little bit more space. If I'm, if I'm going to pull that 2 out, now I need to think about what's going to be on the inside. Well, to get what goes on the inside, I'm going to take this 2 and divide everything by it. So that's going to give me, you know, obviously those 2's cancel out. So uh, I'm just going to have the x. Um, but this part, if I have pi over 3 divided by 2, um, that's going to make pi over 6. And, um, you know, when I do these problems, I understand that when I'm dividing a fraction by a number, um, I can just multiply by the denominator. Okay, so pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6. Um, practice that, that little skill. What if I had pi over 4 divided by 7 for some reason? Can you tell me what that would be? Um, guess what? That would be pi over 28, all right? Because that 7 would just wind up multiplying here. Now, the reason why that's happening, by the way, is because you know that when you divide, um, you can look at that as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this would be the same thing as pi over 4 times 1 seventh. So that's why it's pi over 28. Okay, but you can just use this little shortcut and multiply. So um, let's practice this one more time. 
So say if I had, um, okay. Oh yeah, this should be interesting. Say if I had a coefficient, a B value, if you will, of one third. All right, so I had one third x minus, um, let's say, pi over two. Okay, pi over two is not the phase shift. All right, it's not going to be the phase shift until I pull that one third outside of parentheses. And to know what's going to go inside the parentheses, I need to divide. Okay, so I pulled out the one third, so I'm definitely going to have x minus something. Um, but what's happening is I'm dividing everything by one third. All right, I'm dividing by one third. Um, so these one thirds cancel out, that's why it's just x. But dividing by one third is the same thing as multiplying by three over one, isn't it? All right, it's multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to make three pi over two. So the phase shift would actually be three pi over two, not pi over two. So looking at problem number one, look at this part right here. The five x minus pi over four. The pi over four is not the phase shift yet. Um, to get the phase shift, we're going to have to pull that 5 outside of the parentheses. So let's just practice that. Um, so if I pull out that 5, let me leave a little more space. If I pull out that 5, let's see what I'm going to have. Um, so I'm definitely going to have x minus something. Now to figure out what I'm doing, um, I'm dividing by 5. And when you divide uh, an existing fraction by a number, you might as well just put it in the denominator as a multiplier. That's how you divide. So these fives cancel out. That's why I just have x. And this is going to make pi over 20. All right, again, I just did pi over 4 divided by 5. And that's pi over 20. OK, um, so pi over 20 is going to be the phase shift. Let me just write the rest of this down. So I have two sine. OK, so if I want to know the period, um, remember the period, we do 2 pi over b. And uh, this 5 here is the b value. So for the period, um, the period is 2 pi over b. So the period is 2 pi over 5. So the period, well that's it, the period is 2 pi over 5. Now the midline is going to be this number right here on the end. Um, so the midline is going to be y equals negative 1. Alright, because the midline of course is a horizontal line. Okay, so y equals. Um, the amplitude is this a value here in the front. So the amplitude is 2. It's always positive. Now the phase shift, as we discussed, is going to be pi over 20. And notice it's always the opposite sign. So this is going to be plus pi over 20. Okay, and uh, let's just add in that it's going to be to the right. So that is how you do that. Let's look at some more examples. Okay, um, the period is going to be 2 pi over 3. And I was ready to do some calculations, but there's really nothing I can do with that. So the period is 2 pi over 3, all right? It's 2 pi divided by the b value. The midline is going to be right here. So it's y equals negative 5. The amplitude would be a number right here. Um, so that's 1, all right? It's unchanged, so the amplitude is going to simply be 1. Now the phase shift is the one that takes that extra little bit of thought. So let's, let's just slow down. For the phase shift, we have to pull the 3 outside the parentheses, like this. 
I should I always need to remember to leave myself a little more space. So if I pull that three outside of parentheses, so I'm going to have x. Um, to understand what goes in the parentheses, I will divide both of these by three. So um, of course these threes cancel out, that's why I have x. But here I'll have x minus pi over three. So there you go, the phase shift is pi over three. All right, it's a positive pi over three, it's going to the right. All right, let's practice a bit more. Okay, so the period is two pi divided by the b value, which is two. So it's two pi over two. But of course, these twos cancel out, so the period is pi. The equation of the midline, it's right there, y equals negative three. The amplitude is gonna be the absolute value of this. All right, amplitude is always positive, so the amplitude is going to be five. Now, the phase shift is that trickier part, so let me slow down. For the phase shift, I have to pull the two, that b value, outside of the parentheses. So I'm gonna pull out that two and make the parentheses. Now to figure out what goes on the inside, I'm going to divide. I'm gonna divide by two. Now dividing an, ex an existing fraction by two is the same thing as putting that two in the denominator as a multiplier. So these twos cancel out, so I'll just have x. And here I'm going to have pi over 16. So the phase shift is going to be negative pi over 16. And uh, so I'm talking about to the left. OK. Um, is that clear? I, I know I'm using a shortcut, and that's always dangerous to do. Um, but if you have pi over 8, and you are trying to divide by two. Um, that's the same thing as pi over eight times one half. That's why it's pi over 16. Um, but the shortcut that I'm using is um, if, I have, if I have A over B and I want to divide that by C, that's going to be A over BC. All right, the extra thing that you're dividing by can just join the denominator right here. Okay, so if I have two thirds and I want to divide that by five, that's gonna be the same thing as two thirds times five in the denominator. So that's gonna be two over 15. It's just gonna come up and multiply. So, um, you know, I try to teach you guys the tricks. You're welcome. All right, let's, um, let's do a couple more of these before we end the video. All right, look at number four. The period is going to be two pi over one third, because the period is two pi over b. Um, now, when you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is two pi times three. So the period is going to be six pi. The equation for the midline is gonna come from this right here, so that's gonna be y equals two. The amplitude, the amplitude is the a value, not including any negative sign, so the amplitude is just gonna be one. You see there's no number here, so it's just going to be the usual amplitude of one. Now the phase shift. Here's where we have to slow down and be very, very careful. The phase shift is not pi over six. Instead, we have to factor out this one-third. So let's be careful to put, pull that one-third outside of parentheses and then decide what's gonna go in here. All right, let me leave myself a little bit more space than that. So I'm pulling that one-third out again to decide what's going to go on the inside you can think of it as dividing both sides by one-third no. 
Now, one-third divided by one-third, those cancel out and just leaves you x. But pi over 6 divided by one-third, you have to multiply by the reciprocal. So this is the same thing as pi over 6 times 3, because that's a reciprocal. Um, well, 3 pi over 6 is going to give us pi over 2. In other words, 3 goes into 6 twice, so it's going to be pi over 2. So we will have plus pi over 2. And this is the phase shift. Um, we're going to say negative pi over 2 because it is to the left. All right, let's do two more quick examples. The period, um, of course, is going to come from doing 2 pi over the b value. So that's 2 pi over 1 third. Um, so that's going to be 2 pi times 3. So once again, the period is going to be 6 pi. The midline is going to come from this k value right here. So um, the midline is going to be y equals negative 1. The amplitude is going to come from this a value right here. So that's going to be 1.7. Now the phase shift, that's where you got to slow down. Be careful. All right, so we have this 1 third. We have to bring that out front before we have the phase shift. So remember, that's the same thing as dividing everything by 1 third. So if I divide these by 1 third, that cancels out. Now, dividing this by 1 third is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So dividing by 1 third here is the same thing as multiplying by 3. And uh, so that's going to give us x minus 6 pi. So there's your phase shift right there. Now we're going to say positive 6 pi because it's to the right. One more. Um, if you've been sort of watching and copying off of me, I encourage you to stop the video now and definitely try to do this one by yourself. So the period. Um, of course, once again, the period is found by doing 2 pi divided by the b value. So that's 2 pi over 2. The 2's cancel out, so that's why the period is pi. The midline is going to be right there, so that's y equals 2. The amplitude is going to be right there, um, so that's 2. So all that's left is the phase shift. So um, looking at this part right here, you have to factor the 2 outside of the, of the parentheses. So we can get that if we think of it as dividing um, both of these by 2. So these will cancel out and leave you with x, but this will stick around as pi over 2. So this is your phase shift, um, except it will be negative pi over 2, because this is going to the left. Here endeth the lesson.